Welcome to Practical Caravan TV, the show all about buying, owning and enjoying your caravan. We've got another packed episode ahead of us, full of caravan reviews, tow car tests and campsite visits. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. The Conqueror is one of the grand dams of the Swift portfolio, but in recent years it has suffered something of an identity crisis. First, Swift introduced the elegance over and above it, and the Conqueror started to lose its way. Then it was dropped entirely. Then it was revived, but in an elegance body shell, for a little bit less money with a little bit less spec. Now it's been reborn again for 2018. It's no longer in the Smart HT body shell, but the lighter, and slightly less expensive Smart Plus body shell, the same as a Challenger, although it's wider than a Challenger as befitting its status as one rung down from the Swift flagship. That means that Swift has been able to put in more kit without ramping the price right up, and it's given it its own unique identity for 2018, which is great to see. This van is absolutely packed with kit. We've got all the Alco goodies. We've got a bespoke front end with a very neat aerodynamic look. It's got an external gas barbecue point, external lockers, external 230 volt point, and around the back, an integrated rear view camera. This back panel's new as well, and there's plenty more to see inside. Now, I was gonna show you the lounge first, but let's save the best till last. After all, things are pretty good back here too. For 2018, the Conqueror is a seven model range, with the old 570 having gone the way of pretty much every fixed near side bed model. It's gone. This one is kind of the entry level. It's the 480, with a classic front lounge, rear washroom layout, a two berth, and it's simply colossal back here. It's huge, you can really feel the benefit of that extra width. And talking of huge, check out that sideboard. It's massive a perfect place to put your TV. Hence the provision of just about every kind of power socket and aerial point, apart from, unfortunately, a USB point. Now talking of sockets, it's great to see two in the kitchen too. Ideal if you want to use a toaster and a kettle in the morning without having to put them all over the van. And here in the kitchen, you start to see that extra spec I was talking about. Once again, we've got those lovely Fenix worktops. They really do look very stylish indeed. Standard microwave and a top spec Dometic hob with a dual fuel and separate oven and grill. There's good storage in here too. We've got a huge drawer and then down here, Duriger wire racks. They're a really useful addition. Other spec boosts in this van include an Omnivent overhead and some really nice lighting options. I particularly like these halo lighting over the lockers. Plus of course, Aldi wet central heating and you'll feel the benefit of that in the washroom where there's a radiator. That's alongside the electric flush loo, although it's a bit of a shame it hasn't got a concealed system like most flagship vans these days. There's a huge cupboard in the corner of the washroom and beside it, a good sized vanity unit with a cabinet, a big sink and a massive mirror. In the near side corner, you'll find the shower cubicle, which has got a new shower tray with an Eco Camel Orbit shower head as part of a new, rather smart, backlit shower riser. And here we are, and didn't I say it was worth waiting for? This lounge is really quite special. I think it's fair to say that in the past, Conqueror buyers have tended to be quite traditional, and this really does play up to that buyer. It is a very luxurious place to be, and a very comfortable one, without being too modern or too cold and sterile. We've got warm Arali Sen woodwork with gloss finish, and that rather nice piano black inlaid wood too. The furnishings too, they're quite subtle, but very attractive. In particular, these dusky pink curtains and cushions, they look really great. And it's all set off by some fantastic lighting. We've got those strip lights overhead, corner spotlights in each corner, and these new rather nice Art Deco style corner light units. The sofas themselves are hugely long. You could sit six people around in here, and of course that means they make reasonable single beds. However, if you like each other, no problem. Pull the slats out from beneath the centre chest, rearrange the cushions, and it's a massive double bed. There's plenty of storage, of course, underneath each of these sofas, although the one on this side is a bit restricted by the consumer unit. 
but it's great to see drop down flaps on either side to give you easy access to it. Plus there is that external hatch on the near side. Overhead, well, there's a mass of lockers. We've got six in the lounge here, three on each side, including these neat little corner ones, which make use of space that could otherwise be dead. There's a center chest, of course, with a pull-out table. But if you need more than that, there is a proper freestanding table. It's just a shame it's stored right at the back of the van in a little cupboard in front of the shower. Behind the table, we've got the now traditional Swift Pod with two 230 volt sockets, aerial points and a 12 volt point. Although I do suspect that most people will keep their TVs over there on the sideboard. I do have one complaint. Again, we've got no USB points. Bearing in mind that this is a top spec van and it's 2018, it would have been nice to see them pop one in there. Talking of top spec, look at that sunroof. It's absolutely huge. And that's one of the reasons why this lounge area is so well lit. We've got a rather nice surround that takes in the roof light as well. Although it is a bit of a shame that this shelf beneath the sunroof is quite so pronounced. So having been usurped, dropped, relaunched and then relaunched again, has the Conqueror finally hit upon the perfect formula? Do you know what? I think it might just have done. That extra width giving a fantastic sense of space, the luxury spec and that clear identity really gives you a reason to pick it over an elegance, apart from the fact that it's just a little bit cheaper. I have a sneaking suspicion that in 2018, it might just be all conquering. It seems that nowadays, everyone wants an SUV, but you know what? Big MPVs still have their place and the Volkswagen Charan promises to be one of the best of the breed with its roomy seven seat cabin, high curb weight and gutsy diesel engine. We've been towing with the Volkswagen on the road and at the test track. We're driving the 181 brake horsepower 2 litre diesel DSG Auto in range topping SEL trim. In this spec, it's an expensive car priced at £37,335. It's also a heavy one with a high curb weight of 1,804 kilos. So we've matched it to a big twin axle Swift Expression 636 with a mass in running order of 1,417 kilograms. The two litre diesel engine promises reasonable fuel economy. According to the official figures, it achieves 52.3 MPG on the combined cycle. We've seen 27 miles to the gallon towing on a mixture of A-roads and motorways. It has plenty of pull too, towing the Swift from 30 to 60 in 12 seconds. However, if the roads are damp, care is needed to avoid wheel spin when making a hill start or pulling away from a junction. Our test car is equipped with dynamic chassis control, an 855 pound option. Now this gives drivers the choice of three different modes for the suspension at the push of a button, sport, normal and comfort. We found that the normal setting gives the best balance of comfort and control while towing. At motorway speeds, the Charan is a stable tow car with just a little movement when caught by a gust of wind or overtaking a high-sided vehicle. It holds together well when pushed harder too, tackling our emergency lane change test with little roll, plenty of grip and no pushing or shoving from the caravan. It's a practical car as well as a stable one. Even the third row of seats offers enough space for adults, just about, and the middle row is very roomy. Up front, the driver and front seat passenger have more than enough space to get comfortable and the standard of finish is high. As with most seven-seat MPVs, luggage space is relatively tight with all seats upright, but fold the third row away and there's plenty of room for a family's holiday bags. With all the seats stowed, it's almost more van than family car. In this spec, the Charan is expensive, but it's a practical and roomy MPV. Poor traction aside, it tows very well too, with a strong engine and very impressive stability at speed. What's the most exciting thing about the new Bailey Unicorn 4? Well, perhaps it's this new and massively improved front end with far better integration of the full height front window. Maybe it's the new graphics package and the squared edged tinted windows, which give a much fresher, more modern look. 
Maybe it's the feature kitchens and boutique bathrooms inside. No, it's none of those things. As a father of two, for me, the most exciting thing about this new unicorn is the Segovia. It's the very first dedicated family layout in the unicorn range with six berths. Like all unicorns, it comes loaded with kit. We've got a gas barbecue point up front here, external locker access, an external 230 volt socket, and for 2018, there's now pre-wiring for a motor mover and a rather swish new set of alloy wheels. But far more interesting than that is what lies the other side of this door. This large lounge area is ideal for a family. It's really huge, and it's also every bit as comfortable as it looks. These domestic style sofa backrests are fantastic, really soft and just the thing for reclining. And you can recline right back in the corner here now because the traditional unicorn front shelf has gone. That's a result of Bailey's Alutec construction. It means you don't actually need a rigid bulkhead across the front. You do still get a good sized front chest, of course, with a pull out table. Now, the benefit of being able to nestle right back here in the corner is you can sit back and relax and watch the telly. And there's mounting point on the side of the bulkhead where the fridge is on the near side here with all the relevant sockets, although you will have to fit your own TV mount. This lounge is well equipped as well. We've got some really cool details. These lights, for example, there's one in each corner, so it doesn't matter how you make up the bed, you'll have a reading light, but they also contain a USB charging point perfect for powering up your mobile phone overnight. And there's even a little pocket to tuck it into there while it's charging up. I really like this upholstery. It's the optional Finsbury spec. Although I think in a family caravan like this, the slightly more practical standard Brompton is probably a better bet and it'll save you a few quid in the process. Another nice detail as ever is this fabulous front window, which is probably my favorite feature of Bailey caravans. It's got a new surround for this year, which has been put in as a result of the old one getting quite a few warranty claims, and it's much better integrated with these corner cabinets, which are a lot like the ones that Luna introduced last year with its new sunroof. The one above me is particularly useful because it contains the stereo, and it's great to see that for 2018, that stereo has got a DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. Things really are starting to move forward. These sofas being lovely and long, it means they can be used as single beds. Although I should think most will use it as the main master bedroom for mum and dad. For that, you pull the slats out from beneath the central chest and you rearrange the cushions. Although you do have to rearrange them in a certain way to make it work because of these domestic style backrests, it means that there's a difference in density between the different cushions. Commonly, when you try and fit six berths into a caravan, you end up with quite a squeezed kitchen and bathroom space in the middle of the van but not so in the Segovia. A combination of the long twin axle chassis and a bit of innovative thinking has resulted in the Segovia sharing the same full size, full spec kitchen as the rest of the Unicorn range. In fact, it also adds, because it's a twin axle, this massive fridge with separate freezer. There really is loads of space for a family's vegetables, drinks, and up here, ice creams too. Alongside that, there's a really neat little cupboard here with a top shelf that's ideal for cereal boxes and below it, the storage for the lounge table. Over here on the near side, the big change is that the old island unit of the old unicorn has gone. Instead, we've got a fresh, sharp looking kitchen that comes straight out of Bailey's motorhome range. There's loads and loads of worktop space here too. There's a flap at the end should you need it, but chances are that you won't. Lift that draining board away and pop it over the sink and you've got space at the end there. And then at this end, Bailey has popped a cover over the hob, which is something that caravan manufacturers used to do routinely, but seems to have disappeared in recent years. Lift it up, there's a dual fuel four burner hob and underneath that, a separate oven and grill. There's also a little space here, which is ideal for your pan handle so they won't get jammed up against the bulkhead. That's freed up space beneath for a little wine bottle cupboard. There's also a couple of really great large drawers with soft close action and overhead, a standard microwave and this enormous overhead locker, which has got crockery racks in it as well. It's great to see two sockets in here, sighted just beneath the controller for the Aldi wet central heating. One other thing that's good to see is this illuminated splashback. It has taken Bailey a while to put one in, but it does look very smart. 
In fact, the lighting throughout this van has taken a big step forward. We've got these pale overlocker lighting, spotlights, and indeed underlocker lighting, which is really quite cool. It's a bit like the lighting you get on an aircraft to guide you to the emergency exits. Now, talking of exits, what have we got through this door? It's here that we really see the benefit of putting this van on a longer chassis, because Bailey has managed to fit in the hottest property in caravanning, a full width central washroom. Fantastic. At the moment, it's in full privacy mode, but we can open things up. Over here on the near side, we've got a really good sized shower. It also looks very smart. It's got a stone effect finish and a little cage for carrying your shower gels and shampoos. There is a small amount of wheel arch intrusion in there, but actually not that much for such a big shower cubicle. You also get a light and a vent above. Behind that, well, there's a really good sized wardrobe too. Should be plenty of space in there for all the family's kit. And I'm very pleased to see there's no table hiding at the back of it. It's all clear space. And then over on the off side, well, behind this curtain, we've got a very neat washroom area. There's a radiator for the Aldi wet central heating there and a new bowl sink complete with a click clack plug, a mirror and not one but two bathroom cabinets. There should be plenty of space for even teenagers to store all their relevant lotions and potions. And finally, one detail I really like, it's got a concealed system. There's no more big white box sitting on top of your loo. So at the moment the bathroom is in family mode. But what about when you want to turn it into an ensuite for the couple sleeping up front when the kids have gone to bed? Easy, you just shut this sliding door. And finally, we come to the really special part of this van, at least as far as the kids are concerned, the kids' bedroom at the back. And it's an absolute doozy. It's really well executed. On the offside, we've got two huge bunk beds. I'm six foot three, as I think I've mentioned before, and I can sleep in them perfectly fine with a bit of room to spare. So they're going to be usable right up until the kids' teenage years, which is very unusual. Underneath the lower bunk, there's a bit of storage and each gets a reading light, plus, of course, those USB charging points. In the middle here, as well as a chest of drawers where they can store their smalls and things, we've got a little giveaway at the top that there's something underneath that could be useful. And round here, you've got all the sockets you need for a TV an aerial point, 12 volt and 230 volt socket. So this can be the entertainment zone as well. Here on the near side, there's a really good sized dinette and a good sized table ideal for playing board games. At night, of course, it turns into a couple of bunk beds. You fold out the upper one and there's a ladder too. But that is the only floor I've been able to find so far. Once it's bunk beds, there are no reading lights in here, not on either side, which is a bit of a shame. It seems a bit of an oversight to me. Storage wise, well, there's absolutely masses. As well as that space under the fixed bed and the chest of drawers, there's further space under these two seats and overhead, a couple of shelves and a couple of lockers. The Explorer Group reintroduced the idea of a truly luxurious family caravan last year with the mighty Buccaneer Galera. And it's great to see other manufacturers following suit. With the Segovia, Bailey has created a layout that truly innovates and it really works too. And it should serve to broaden the appeal of the much improved new unicorn to a whole new breed of buyer. With a fantastic location just one minute from the beach, Warren Farm Holiday Center is a big, modern, fully equipped holiday park, ideal for a family-based break in Burnham-on-Sea in Somerset. We've got um, 600 touring pitches, so we are a very large holiday park. Um, the fields are all split into different sections. So there's a quieter end of the campsite, which is more sort of back to nature, or you can be closer to the clubhouse and the play barn. And within those fields, they're also split into dog friendly areas and also no dog areas. So if you don't like dogs, you can go in the no pet field or if you're bringing the dogs with you, which a lot of people do, then we're very dog friendly as well. Being such a large park, there really is something for everyone. From the sedate pets corner, where the kids can meet everything from a donkey, to a pig, to a guinea pig, to the noisy excitement of an arcade. 
and there's even basketball or 10-pin bowling on offer, no matter how old you are or how you choose to bowl. Um, in the school holidays, we run a free events program. We have tractor rides, we have kids club workshops and shows. There's archery and a climbing wall. So as well as our other facilities, we've got additional free activities for children. And right on the doorstep, you can go and visit Cheddar Caves and Wookie Hole. We're very close to Western Supermare and Breen Leisure Park, um, the theme park and the Splash Water Park is just one mile away, so there's plenty to offer right on our doorstep. The park is literally packed with facilities and services, including, believe it or not, its very own fish and chip shop and Chinese takeaway. But what about the pitches, you ask? Well, they're basic, but very functional. The majority of pitches are grass, with around 130 hard standing. They all have electricity, but there are no fully serviced pitches here, so water to fill your tank comes via a communal standpipe in each field. Each field also has its own toilet and wash block, where you can access an L sand point, and those in a motorhome can use the drive over grey waste disposal point. Inside the wash block, there's yet more facilities, including a dishwashing area as well as a large launderette. Um, we come here because it's an enjoyable camp. Everybody's friendly. Um, the kids love it. They've got a play barn. They've got the toilets are free and the showers. Everything's free down here, basically. The shop is lovely. The people in the shop are really nice. Facilities are excellent. And fair play, the wardens, they work, you know, to keep them clean. And they are, it doesn't matter whether it's morning, night, they're spotless when you go over there. And I mean, they around picking the litter up, and well, it's just thoughtless, really. I honestly, I don't know if people can afford it. I like to know where and how they can afford it, because I've been on quite a few pitches, and they're not old, but we're oldish, <laughs> but we love it. The countryside around the park is great for dog walking and exploring, or even taking a boat trip out onto the River Axe. There's a fishing lake on site, and if you do feel the need to go off site, then the bus to Western Supermare is just a two minute walk away. Attached to the park is the Beachcomber Clubhouse and Bar, with a wide selection of pub grub available, plus entertainment in the shape of singers and entertainers most nights in high season, as well as bingo a couple of times each week. So if these are the kind of things that float your boat, then this fifth generation family run holiday centre should definitely be on your wish list for next year. And with that, we come to the end of another show. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more campsites, cars and caravans. In the meantime, you can keep up with us on Twitter and on Facebook or via our website. And don't forget that Practical Motorhome TV will be along in just a few minutes. Until next time, goodbye.